Hi guys, so this is the third part of the relative strength analysis series. So in the first two parts we have covered the basics of relative strength and in the second part we have seen how to shortlist the strongest sectors out of a given list of sectors. So in this part we will be focusing on a bottoms up approach. Uh, we will be selecting a, a strong sector and uh, within which we will go down and select the strongest set of stocks in those sectors and then I'll cover some uh, rules that have to be applied. So this is my mail ID, Twitter and YouTube. In case you have any doubt about what I'm going to show you, you can contact me here. So in the bottoms up approach, what we're going to see is uh, the first step is uh, relative strength analysis of sector. Then the second step is relative strength analysis of stock. Uh, the step three is uh, analyzing the broader market trend. Step four is uh, we'll be setting out some uh, entry criteria that we have to follow. And the fifth uh, step is a stock checklist. I'll be showing you which companies to target uh, with this strategy. So uh, when it comes to sectors, I would rather tell you that uh, it would be better if you stick with predefined sectors uh, by your respective exchanges. Now it is not that you cannot uh, make your custom sector index and track that. You can do that. But it is just that when you opt for a predefined sector within an exchange, uh, most of the you know reasonable companies fall into that uh, you know sector list. Uh, whereas when we customize a sector, you know sometimes uh, some not so good companies can also come into the watch list, right? So uh, another important aspect that I want to focus is on you know uh, focus on higher high pattern on relative strength line that is with respect to sectors. Uh, this is something we covered in detail in part two. So if you have missed out on uh, part second or part one, please go back and watch those videos because without that, uh, this video will be of limited use. Uh, also, if you if you look at the second part where we covered a lot about sectors, I actually forgot to mention a point there that uh, the relative strength line, if, if it has been underperforming for a long period of time, and then you see that that line is, uh, you know, uh, starting to shape up beautifully and it starts breaking out, then always, uh, always give those sectors more important impo importance, right? So uh, sectors can be, you know, compared with respect to broader market trend. Now for our markets, it's, it's Nifty 50. Uh, it can be S&P 500 for the US market. Uh, for the Germany market, it can be the DAX index. Uh, for the uh, UK market, it can be the FTSE 100. So it depends on uh, which market you are trading. Uh, make note of the broader market index and you can plot all your relative strength charts uh, with respect to those broader markets. So this uh, uh, criteria of shortlisting sector we'll be uh, covering up in detail uh, in, in the slides to come. And this 200 day moving average criteria also when we'll be uh, looking at entry and exit, I'll be taking up uh, this criteria as well. So if you remember, this was the index uh, that we shortlisted as the strongest index, this and information technology. Uh, that is in the second part. So this, this um, consumer durables index had a better relative strength structure. So naturally this becomes a choice. So I'll just take you down. Th this time frame is from uh, 2011 to 2012. And I'll just take you down uh, to respective stocks within the sectors and we'll see whether we can narrow down uh, which stocks we want to trade. So this is the first stock in the consumer durables sector. It's Hindustan Unilever. If you see uh, the relative strength line is forming a, a, a structure of higher high and higher low. The price is also above the 200 day moving average. Now typically when we get, uh, you know, when price moves away from 200 day moving average, either wait for a time consolidation or price consolidation before you enter. But uh, these are the sort of stocks you have to target. Look at the relative strength line. Uh, this is indicating that over a period of last one year, the stock has outperformed the broader market index by quite some margin. The next chart is of ITC, again, uh, one of the vital in, uh, stocks in this consumer durable index. Again, the same uh, structure is observed, structure of higher high and higher low with respect to relative strength line and price being above 200 day moving average and it is trading above it consistently. So these are the two stocks that you can see that is Hindustan Unilever and ITC. Out of this, if you see HUL has a much better and much stronger relative strength line. ITC is also trading up, but its relative strength line is, uh, you know, it has some periods of where it uh, moves uh, in a sideways range and then it starts to break out. Whereas if you see at HUL, HUL is a uniform uptrending line. So the next stock is Mahindra and Mahindra. So you can directly see the comparison. Uh, when you compare it with HUL and ITC, the previous two stocks, 
the stock is below 200 day moving average it's more or less sideways its relative strength line you know it has started from here it's somewhere here only rs is still okay but if you see price is more you know in a sideways consolidation you don't want to look at these stocks another stock is asian paints again the price is below the 200 day moving average over a period of 12 months the stock has gone nowhere the relative strength line is still better because uh, maybe the benchmark index is not doing well but again if you see there is a structure of lower highs and lower lows forming here so you want to avoid this stock as well the next stock is bharti airtel now again you see price has not done much over the past 12 months the relative outperformance that you see is only in terms of benchmark that, that is benchmark might be falling and this might be falling less that's why the relative strength line is doing well but again if you see closely over the past 6 months you're seeing a structure of lower high and lower low developing again you need to avoid this stock the next stock is hero motor corp these are all stocks within the consumer durable index same thing is observed price is relatively flat rs is still doing well but over the past 6 months it is just consolidating in a sideways range next stock that we see is titan industries now again price has not done much relative strength line itself is sort of flat you see a structure of lower highs and lower lows forming again for this period the stock is in a void so if you look at britannia industries it's uh, when when compared to the last four five stocks this stock is uh, obviously doing a much, uh, obviously doing much better I'm sorry about that the price is trading above the 200 day moving average and relative strength line you know is forming higher highs and higher lows but still when you compare this stock with something like hul and itc it's very clear which stock is doing you know much better and which one we should target so i'll just take you to uh, this stock matrix here so what we see here is that i have marked two columns that is one is ratio outperformance and another one is price above 200 day moving average now i pay a lot of emphasis in my trading with respect to 200 day moving average because uh, historically if you go and uh, check out charts uh, most of the bullish trends do happen above this average and most of the bearish uh, trends happen below this average now 200 is just a number you can have 190 210 220 or 180 does not matter but um, yeah, it's it's just a matter of preference nothing else so once we have the stock matrix uh, ready what we find is that uh, hul and itc the stocks that we saw uh, the first two examples they are actually yeah, the ratio is outperforming um the benchmark index mm -hmm. and price is decisively above the 200 day moving average now britannia stock the last stock that we saw this one i've marked it in the uh, you know as an orange marking because uh, this chart is uh, relatively better than most of the consumer durable uh, sector stocks that we saw but still it's not at par with hul and itc so look what we have done what we have done is that within an index uh, within an index there were about 8 uh, to 9 stocks and we have just Uh, move down to two stocks that is we have just shortlisted two stocks so if we go back to the second part where we covered the sectors the second part of the video uh, uh, rs uh, series we had taken about eight to nine sectors and we just shortlisted two sectors that was consumer durables and information technology and uh, moving on from there what we have done is we have shortlisted uh, you know out of eight or nine stocks within the consumer durable sectors to only two stocks so i think from a basket of about 700 to 800 stocks because we were taking about 7 uh, to 8 uh, sectors uh, we have just narrowed down to about two stocks where we want to trade and invest so this is the uh, main benefit of relative strength analysis that from a basket of stocks you can easily narrow down to about two three stocks which you want to trade and invest for the next 6 to 7 months right so again this is a, a bottoms up approach what we do is we uh, move down to uh, the sector first then we pick out the stock a top down approach uh, is usually you know when you uh, start from the economy the broader market index then the sector and then the stock so bottoms up approach usually it's you start from the company first that is stock but but what i have done is i have started with the sector first and then moved on to the stock right so again the main benefit of rs i would like to repeat is that we have shortlisted from a basket of about 700 800 stocks to just two stocks right so the the third crucial step that you know i had uh, mentioned in the framework i'll just take you back there that is this one so we have covered the uh, sector part in the second series the stock part we have covered in this series uh, we had also covered some part of it in the you know part 1 of the rs series 
So the third part we'll come to that is a broader market trend, which I was about to show you. Yeah. So for broader market trend, what I've done is I simply use the 200 day moving average to see uh, whether the prices are trending up or not. If the price is decisively below the 200 day moving average, I don't uh, pick out stocks through this RS method because um, uh, you see the stock might fall less, but it, it would still fall uh, in case the in case most of the broader market indexes are correcting. So during those period, you can actually use RS to short stocks. So you go back to the second part, uh, second video, uh, where we you know uh, highlighted the worst performing sectors, and then you can you know shortlist stocks from those sectors and try and take a short sell trade right it's exactly the opposite process all right so again uh, in case you use some different method to determine the long term trend you can use it i've just given 200 day moving average as an example here because i typically use that but in case you use uh, market profile or elliott wave theory or uh, maybe some uh, harmonic patterns or fractals whatever it is you can substitute that with uh, your own method that doesn't matter so when we come to individuals, uh, the fourth step was uh, about uh, validating entry criteria. What I meant was, at times what happens is, I'll just take you through this first example in the San Unilever. Now let's say, suppose we uh, decide that we want to invest or trade in this stock. We've already seen that this stock has run up quite a bit. So by entry criteria, what I mean is that wait for the stock to retrace, right? This is already one of the strongest stocks out there, okay? So what you can do is either you can just invest uh, some portion right here, let's say about 20, 30% and remaining 60 to 70%, you can do it when the stock retraces. Uh, there, are, there are many videos I've uploaded, let's say about Fibonacci retracement or uh, simple breakout trading ones. You can check out those ones. Uh, like once you have shortlisted a stock, how to re-enter a stock again. You can check out those videos if you want to. Uh, but um, uh, make sure that whichever stock you choose, it has to be above the 200 day moving average or the slope of 200 day moving average has to be on the upside. Uh, why we keep this criteria is because uh, in the second uh, video, I showed a RS cycle chart to you. Do refer it if you have already forgotten or you missed it. Uh, at times what happens is if the broader market starts to correct, if the relative strength factor of a, st a stock is strong, it will just fall less. Whereas it will, uh, you know, uh, still follow the broader market on the way down. So you don't want to be in uh, caught up in those situations where you know uh, the stock starts to fall so that is why i keep on uh, a criteria that is for my my own criteria is 200 day moving average if i find the price above it and it is one of the strongest stocks i just go and buy it okay and as price retraces more either i add more to the positions or um, uh, you know on breakouts i add more positions right so for me uh, once the relative strength analysis part is over I always check where the price is with respect to 200 day moving average. If it is above, I directly buy it. If it's below, I kind of avoid it. I hope I'm clear. So the last um, step that I wanted to cover was the stock checklist. So uh, what I've shown you here in examples is that the stocks that I've plotted is against the benchmark index. But uh, if you want to uh, go down a step further, you can also plot relative strength charts for stocks against its own sectors. So I'll just repeat, let's say we have uh, the first stock as an example, Hindustan Unilever. You can do relative strength analysis on it by plotting it against Nifty 50, that is the benchmark index of our markets or with consumer durable as well. So if you find that a stock is, you know, having a higher high relative strength on both benchmark index and the sector index, that stock is a high probability trade. So do keep it on your watch list, right? So in the end, one template that I want to share is uh, the kind of stocks that you should target. The first step is that uh, the company should have no debt or very little debt. Promoter holding should be high. The profit growth should be above 6 to 7% CAGR. A same goes, goes with ROCE and ROE. It should be at least 6 to 7% or high. The higher the better. And institutional ownership of the stock should be high. What, what we are doing with this checklist is, see, you are going behind the strongest sector and the strongest stock right in terms of price performance so why not add one more element uh, that is uh, fundamentally the stock should be performing you know at least reasonably well so what that will do is it will um, you know help you select good companies and in the end that that, uh, that is what matters that if you invest or trade in good companies it's always uh, beneficial in the longer run so i'll just sum up the key points here 
So the first step again is the uh, selection of sectors and stocks. The entry and exit criteria can be decided based on which method you prefer. I just prefer the simple 200 day moving average method. Uh, make sure to check the broader market trend. If the broader market trend is down, uh, do not uh, chase uh, high relative, re uh, sorry, relative strength stocks because uh, they might just fall less, but they would still follow the broader market trend. Uh, make sure your stock business is also doing well. That is strong sectors, strong stocks and strong businesses. This is a, a, a very good combination to trade with. Uh, if the stock has run up quite a bit uh, with respect to its 200 day moving average, uh, do wait for a decent retracement. Initially, you can enter about 20-30% of positions, but do wait uh, for a retracement to add more positions. Uh, you will also find a lot of uh, softwares that have come up, come up these days uh, regarding relative strength that give you uh, relative strength rankings. While um, all softwares are good, I, I, do, I always appreciate uh, a software coming out and helping traders. But what I feel is that uh, don't rely too much on softwares. You can, you can sort of have a short list out of a software, but I don't think any software can uh, you know, replace a, ch a trader's intuition or judgment. So do rely on your judgment and um, your uh, eyeballing techniques of charts that actually I, I don't think any software can ever replace that. So please do keep that in mind as well. So uh, what you see here is uh, the part one and part two of the relative strength analysis series. So in case you have watched the third part first, that is this part, uh, please go back and watch the first and the second part because you will you'll tend to understand things better. Uh, there are some things I've shown here which you won't understand unless you have watched the first two parts. So, and uh, as always, in case you have any doubt, you can reach out to me. And thanks a lot again for taking out the time and watching this video.